Hello everyone, it's Mari here for Honey Bee Stamps. I'm going to be creating this card for you today using a really fun bunch of products from Honey Bee Stamps. I'm going to be using the awesome Dad's Garage stamp set. Here you can see all of the really fun images that are part of that set. And of course there's a coordinating die set if you would like to die cut these out. And just love that you can use that coordinating die to get a nice crisp crisp cut for each of these images. I'm going to use the Take a Ride sentiment set as well. It coordinates beautifully with that Dad's Garage set. It also is just a really great uh, sentiment set. Um, really, really love that. And of course, there's a coordinating die set as well for that sentiment set. In addition to those items, I wanted to also use the Diamond Plate Stencil. This is a very cool stencil that helps you to create that look of a garage floor or you could use this for lots of different applications. Now I have a piece of white cardstock that's trimmed down to six and a quarter by four and a quarter and I'm going to use a ruler and my grid mat here to help me draw a straight line to create a little line for the floor um, where the wall meets the, the ground or the floor here for the little scene that I'm going to be creating. So I'm just going to create a really faint pencil line here that's just going to help me line things up when I'm working on this scene that I'm going to be creating. Now I am going to be using some Ranger Opaque Texture Paste. What I like to do with products like this is use a little bit of press and seal or plastic wrap um, just to make sure that that product stays nice and fresh. I am using a Tim Holtz stencil here, but Honey Bee actually does have a brick stencil. I went to look for it in my stash and I couldn't find it. So either I have lent it out or I'm not really sure. But anyways, I used this one from my stash, but I do really love that Honey be one and I am going to link that up in the description box below. Now I'm just using that opaque texture paste through this stencil to create the look of brick in my background and I will use my heat tool off camera to dry that and now I'm just going to take that same stencil again and overlay it over top of the brick slightly on the left that I've already created and then create a continuous line of brick for my wall in my little garage here that I'm creating and that's just going to create this uh, look of brick across the entire uh, two-thirds of the top of this panel here. So once I've got that all done and dried, I'm going to put that into my splat box and I'm going to use some Distress Oxide sprays to colorize that brick. I'm starting off with Antique Linen and I've sprayed that quite liberally. Now I'm going to go in with some Lost Shadow and fill in some of the areas, but also add a little bit on some other areas as well that don't, that also, also have some of that Antique Linen. I'm going to also spray some a vintage photo uh, oxide spray as well on here. You can see me here adding water and what that's going to do is it's just going to let that product run and I'll just spread it and what it does is it really tends to pool in those cracks of that brick and it's really going to define the brick shape. I love how that looks. It also adds some distressing, kind of makes it look like an older wall. Really love that look and once that's all dry you can see it does dry back a little bit lighter. I will add a little bit of ink blending to that later. Now I'm using some of my or one of my art crayons from from Tim Holtz, the Distress Crayons, I should say. This one is Pumice Stone. I just scribbled it onto some plastic, actually onto that stencil, and just blended it on with a Tim Holtz blending brush there. I just added a little bit of water to distress that a little bit more, and now I'm adding some more of that Distress Crayon in the Pumice Stone. And this is just going to, again, create a little bit more of that distressed look with my background. I just really wanted this wall to look sort of old and a little bit grungy. So I'm just going to finish applying that with that brush and now you can see that panel is nice and dry. I really like how that looks. I'm going to take some uh, Distress Oxide ink here. This one is pumice stone I believe and I think I also use hickory smoke and a little bit later um, also some vintage photo. And what I'm doing here is I'm adding a little bit of a ground below the brick wall. And so here you could just see I'm adding a little bit of that hickory smoke as well. So I've got the pumice stone and the hickory smoke to create this floor. 
Now I'm going in with some Crafters Workshop texture paste. This one is, or stencil butter I should say, this one is the color Platinum. And I'm just going through with that diamond plate stencil just to create that shiny texture on that ink. And that's just gonna create that look that this is some sort of a garage pattern. So I really love that, I think that's fun. Now I have stamped out all of the images from the Dad's Garage stamp set that I'm going to be using. I stamped those with the Honey Bee Intense Black Ink, which is alcohol ink friendly. I'm going to do some really basic Copic coloring. If you follow me at all, you know I am not a wonderful colorist with Copics, but I can do some really basic coloring for sure. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm not gonna show you this whole process of coloring because it's just really, really basic, but I used cool grays for the grays on the motorcycle. I wanted this to look like a really neat vintage bike. I think that's what it's meant to look meant to be is a vintage motorcycle so that's really what I was going for now I don't really know the ins and outs of what all of these different little parts are for the motor of the bike so please excuse me if I don't color these correctly but I was just kind of um, winging it and didn't really know for sure what color things should be so I just colored them as I saw fit and I really wanted to just make sure I did a contrast of the darker and lighter shades of gray so that the different bits of of the motor and so on show up. So you'll just see me there using the lighter gray for some of the areas and the darker gray along with, just to make sure that we can really see well all of these different little parts. Now I am going to use a really bright red as an accent here. I really love this. I think it looks really fun. And you'll see me here doing the gas tank here in that red. I'm also going to add some little pops of yellow onto that area as well here in a little bit. So I actually did pull up an image on Google of a vintage motorcycle. And I was kind of trying to use that as a reference for these different little parts. And um, I don't know, I think it looks okay in the end. I'm not sure if I got all of the areas colored that should have been colored. I wasn't sure if you could see through some of the parts or if all of the white space in this should have been colored. But at any rate, I think I got a general impression of what a vintage motorcycle should look like. Now I am just really using the tip of my brush. So you can see that I have the brush really, um, the brush tip of my markers really uh, upright so that I can just really get into these tiny little areas. And I'm not putting any pressure really at all on the marker so that I can just get into these tiny little areas. Just doing a little bit of shading, not too much at all. Um, just really kind of going for a basic look. And when it comes to the shading of the red areas, I don't really have a medium tone of red in my Copic marker collection. So what I do is a little bit of a tip to tip um, shading here in a bit. This dark red here is quite a difference from the bright red that I used for the base color. So here you'll just see I'm picking up with the lighter red, a little bit of that darker, and that's really going to help me that tip to tip method to blend out those different areas where I want a little bit more of a nice blend, a nice smooth blend from the bright to the dark. So I'm liking how that's looking so far. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of orange and yellow to color in that little um, area on that gas tank. And I'm just noticing a few other little areas that still need to be colored in. I'll finish those up with the gray. And when I'm all finished coloring the motorcycle, off camera I colored the rest of the different images and used the coordinating die set to die cut these out. Aren't these fun? I love how this, this turned out. I think it's really cool. And you can use this set in so many different ways. You could, instead of die cutting, you could also mask these off and do a single layer card. It's just a really, really fun stamp set. I love it. So now I'm going in with that brown and I'm just going to do a little bit of shading around the edges of that brick as well just to define the edges of that a little bit more. And I'll even go down into the gray slightly as well, but mostly I'll stick with the brick area here for what I'm doing with this shading. And you'll just see that that does add a nice bit of edge to this little scene background. 
I like how that just defines that edge. I think it looks good. So now that I've got that all finished, I have cut a mat slightly larger than my six and a quarter by four and a quarter card front. And I've cut that from some black and I'm just going to adhere my card front here onto that black mat. And this is a five by seven landscape top folding white card base. So I'll go ahead and glue this onto that black mat. I'll just center that as best I can so that I get a nice even margin of that black. I'm going to use some paperweights here and my hand just to give that a really nice press and make sure that that brick background is nicely adhered to that black mat. So I'll just take a second to get that really well pressed. And when I'm done, I'm going to add some foam tape onto the entire back of that black cardstock, as well as my Honey Bee liquid adhesive. That liquid adhesive is just going to help me wiggle this around a little bit until I have it in the center. And in that way, the foam adhesive doesn't grab right away. It just gives you that chance to wiggle that into the center. Once I'm happy with that, again, I will take the paper weights. I'll let that sit there for a bit and make sure that it's really well adhered. I'll give it some really good presses with my hand. And now I'm ready to adhere the details onto the card front. So when I was planning where I was going to position things here, I decided that I wanted to put the gas tank over on the left. And I wanted to make a little grouping here with the gas tank, the jerry can, and the little oil can. And so I use a combination of foam adhesive and my liquid glue to add some layering to this different little, these different little bits and this scene. So what I was really going for here is some dimension. And if you're going to mail this and you really wanted to be mindful of that dimension, you may decide to do this more as a single layer card and not add this foam adhesive. And you could totally do that. Like I said, you could also achieve a single layer card look by doing some masking. You wouldn't have to create the texture with that brick on the back either. You could do just some ink blending through the stencil to create the brick look as well for a single layer card. So now I wanted to um, make sure that the motorcycle was touching these elements over to the left just to add that um, continuation of these elements to make the elements um, just kind of seem like they're all connected. And so I'm adding a double layer of foam adhesive there because I want the motorcycle to be a higher level of foam than the pieces I've already added. I'm going to add this flat. In retrospect, I kind of wished I'd moved the motorcycle down a little bit towards the bottom of the card, but it's fine the way that it is. Now I'm going to add my sentiment and of course this is from the Take a Ride sentiment set. I love this sentiment. It says, lucky for you, vintage is in. Really great sentiment for a birthday card. I love this so much and I definitely am going to be using this for my husband's next birthday. Now I wanted to use this open sign with a little bit of foam adhesive here over to the right side and you'll notice that I keep the margin about the same as the jerry can is over to the left. So I try to keep this about the same distance from the right edge as the jerry can is from the left edge just to sort of keep a little bit of symmetry to my composition. Like I said before, you can see that things probably should have, the motorcycle probably should have been moved down just a little bit, but I think it looks okay. Now I'm gonna add some details. I love doing this when I'm working on finishing up a project, and I like to add just a little bit of extra dimension and interest with different products. So this is some Nouveau Crystal Drops in silver, and I'm just taking this and adding this to different little areas on the, on the card, mostly to the motorcycle, but I'll also add a little dot to that open sign as well. And that's just gonna create a little more realism. I'm going to add a little bit of gold to the nozzle of the oil can, which I think looks fun. I tried to make the top of the oil can look a little bit rusty by adding some dots of brown in my alcohol marker. Here you can just see, I'm just gonna take my craft pick and scrape away some of that gold nouveau crystal drops where it got on the black ink. I didn't want it on there. Now I'm taking a black glaze gel pen 
And this is going to just dry dimensional and shiny. I'm adding that onto my gas pump here. And I just like how that looks. All of these little details really do make a difference. I'm adding a white paint pen as well. You could use a white gel pen. And this is just going to add some little highlights here and there on my project. I think I have a little bit of trouble getting my white paint pen going here, but eventually I'll get it going. And you'll just see here and there everywhere, I just add a few little like lines and white dots. And this is just gonna add that detail and highlighting to those different little areas on the project. Wow, I absolutely love this stamp set, Dad's Garage. I think it is so cool. It's one of my favorites from the new collection. And I hadn't, this was the first time I'd used it, and I had a blast creating this card. I wanted to add a little bit of dimension to the top of that gas pump with my Nouveau Glaze. And I really like how that dried back when it's finished. Thanks so much for watching, friends. I have linked up in the description box to the products that I've used for my card today. Have an amazing day, friends, and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.